Hi, I'm the Philosopher's Games, aka Chris, and this is a little trailer analysis for the little sneak peek trailer that we recently got in the Future of Games show by GamesRadar. And it just revealed a bit of gameplay for the upcoming Gollum game that comes out 2022. It was delayed. And I will have a look at that and compare this to what we know from the book. There are multiple interesting aspects to all of this. And first of all, I should mention this is like a freestyle video that I just produced really fast. And probably my narration is not up to the usual standards. I really try to make it interesting though. So let's start right with uh, what we know from the game so far. If you go to the Steam page of it, we can read... While being vital to the story by J.R.R. Tolkien, many parts of Gollum's quest have not been told in detail yet. In The Lord of the Rings Gollum, you get to experience this story. From his time as a slave below the Dark Tower to his stay with the elves of Mirkwood. And this basically gives us an idea on wh in what time frame this game will play. He is a slave or he is in Mordor under the Dark Tower and then later in Mirkwood. This potentially will be um, the, the outline of the game. It's a stealth action game where you sneak around with Gollum and experience a bit of his story. And I can already reveal this. The story isn't of this time frame isn't really fleshed out. We have some dates and we know, okay, at this point, around this point, Gollum is there and then he goes there. That's basically what we know, but what happens in between exactly, we don't know. And this also is something that the makers of this game, the Delic Entertainment, have to make up for the most part. That's also a little warning when it comes to this. But of course, you can make some educated guesses. You can build some theories and also make some references here and there. That is totally uh, possible. This is a story we don't know much about and maybe interesting to... Um, have a little game that covers this area. But this is a huge area, actually. We will see this in a moment when we look into Appendix B. But um, a very important thing for this, especially when it comes to sources, is that this is also licensed, this is licensed by um, or through Middle Earth Enterprises, who have the rights only for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. So they don't have access to the Silmarillion or the Unfinished Tales, where we also find some information about this time. So, of course, the information they have access to, officially, is not that complete anyway. And that might be concerning. Though, for the most part, the most information we have is from Shadow of the Past and from Appendix B, from The Lord of the Rings, which they have access to. And I assume that is basically what they will use as outline for their story and fill the gaps with some interesting ideas, I hope. And looking forward to that. But let's have a look at the law itself. The first mention, of course, not the first mention of Gollum in the uh, tale, but the interesting mention for us is uh, Third Age 2941. At this time, this is the time when The Hobbit happens for the most part. In 2942, Bilbo returns to the Shire, but in 41, um, Gollum loses the One Ring and Bilbo finds it in the Misty Mountains. And then Bilbo escapes. And what happens then with Gollum? So according to um, the Appendix B, uh, we see that in the year 2944, so two years, Gollum is sitting in his cave and then Gollum leaves the mountains and begins his search for the Thief of the Ring. That means he was sitting there for two years. What was he doing there, one could ask. And of course, we know that Gollum is a weird, wicked creature and he has a he has fear and hate for the sun, for the moon, for light, for darkness. He hates everything himself, he hates the ring. And this all this leads to probably him having problems leaving his cave, going on his way because he fears what is outside. But after two years, his his hate and his desire to get his ring back is so strong that he actually overcomes this fear and hate and he leaves um, his cave. That's at least my theory and uh, I guess a very common theory. And we see 2944 versus when does Lord of Rings play? 3018. So or 3001 is Bilbo's birthday. So we see there is a huge gap. It's, a, it's decades. And let's go slowly to the mentions um, of Gollum in Appendix B here. 
So the next interesting um, point here in history is Third Age 2951. So nine years after Gollum leaves his, his, his cave. And there's another detail I should maybe insert here. Because we know from the Shadow of the Past that in this nine year gap, Gollum went as far as Dale. And he knew his name. He knew that this guy was Bilbo Baggins. But he did not know where he where he was from, where he lives. And he had to find out this information. That is his main um, goal here, to, to find the thief. He must to know where the thief lives. And he knows only knows his name. In Dale, he learns that this Bilbo Baggins is actually quite famous and that Bilbo Baggins lives in the Shire. And what then happens, we don't know. But this must have happened somewhere, in my opinion, between 2944 and 2951. Because... In 2951, Sauron declares himself openly and gathers power in Mordor. He begins the rebuilding of Barad-dûr. Gollum turns towards Mordor. Sauron sends three of the Nazgûl to reoccupy Dol Guldur. So, you see a lot of things happen here. Really a lot of things. This is also the time when Elrond reveals to Estelle that he is actually Aragorn and um, gives him the shards of Narsil. And he also meets Arwen the first time. So this is a really fascinating year if you think about this. A lot of things happen here exactly in this year. And interestingly also Gollum turns towards Mordor. But also Sauron declares himself openly as said. And this is an interesting detail because in my opinion, I have to add this, him declaring himself open, uh, openly and gathering power in Mordor means also that his power are his servants. It's a big part of his power and he gathers this power in Mordor. And that is why also Gollum, who was under the One Ring for such a long time, also comes to Mordor. He is summoned there. He probably can't do this uh, differently. He has to go there. In the trailer we also see like this is typical Sauron voice and see like a, a symbol of a red eye. I can show it here you in post-production. And this is where um, I assume, this is mechanic I assume that uh, is in the game. Maybe this is like a, a save point or he gets new abilities or whatever. But, um, but this, at least in, in my opinion, um, will be part of the game that... As Frodo, as we see in the films, he sometimes is, or in the books, is sometimes a little bit like in trance. And uh, when he, when when Nazgul is near, or when Sauron is uh, looking at him, that is um, also a, a thing I assume will happen with Gollum, and what we will see in, in this part that he is summoned to Mordor, and he can't. It's like a power drawing him there, even though nobody would go there freely, and especially not, I guess, Gollum, because he knows the ring is not there anyway. And so he abandons his quest, finding Bilbo in these nine years, and goes to Mordor. If we now move on uh, further, the next mention, we notice that uh, the next mention is relatively late in the books. 2980. So that is, if I calculate this correctly, 29 years later. There we can read about this time. Gollum reaches the confines of Mordor and becomes acquainted with Shelob. So it takes Gollum wherever he was at this time. We don't, we don't really know. Wherever he was, it takes him 29 years to get to the borders of Mordor, basically, and then uh, becomes acquainted with Shelob there and makes a deal to, um, for, for his potential revenge. He has an idea there. And it's quite fascinating. We just see how long this time span already is. This time span with a lot of blank pages. And we don't know what is actually happening there. What's going on um, with, with, with Gollum? What, what's, what, what's he up to? Why does it take him so long to get there? And then he reaches um, the confines of Mordor. And now it takes even longer till we... Um, not even longer, but also a very, very long time until um, we hear again... Of, of Gollum. It seems at this time he is in Mordor and whatever he does there we don't know. That's a lot of blank pages. The next mention is in Third Age 2000, uh, 3001 
that is Bilbo's farewell uh, feast and his birthday party. And there, uh, Gandalf in the background um, seeks for news of Gollum and calls on the help of Aragorn. What I should mention here is that in the past, Gandalf, I don't know when, Gandalf already start searching for Gollum. And then he abandoned this idea. He couldn't find him. He asked um, the, 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 the wood elves of Thranduil to help him out, track him, and they are really good, but they can't find him because also Gollum is a very sneaky creature. And then something happens and Gandalf has to change change his, his priorities and stop this. And only in 3001 he thinks about, oh yeah, Gollum, maybe I should look out for him. And he asks this promising um, strider, Aragorn, who um, will become maybe become king one day and who he supports a lot and asks him to help find Gollum. He's, Aragorn is described as the greatest huntsman and traveler of of the, of the time, basically, and of the age. That is what Gandalf says about him. And if we now look further, then another decade almost um, is over. That's the year 3009. So eight years later, Gandalf and Aragorn renew their hunt for Gollum in intervals during the next eight years, searching in the vales of Anduin, Mirkwood, Rovanion, and confines of Mordor. At some time during these years, Gollum himself ventured into Mordor and was captured by Sauron. So it seems like, okay, maybe he was at the confines of Mordor, like, uh, I don't know, decades ago, made his deal with Shelob, and then he maybe left Mordor again and then went back. It's not 100% clear where Gollum goes. You see how confusing this um, potentially is. And then... In this time, at some point, he ventured into Mordor again and is captured himself by Sauron. And if we now look into a source that this game has no access to, the Unfinished Tales, if we look into um, the chapter The Hunt for the Ring, basically the first sentence of this chapter is, so Gollum was captured in Mordor in the year 3017 and taken to Barad-dûr and there questioned and tormented. You see, this uh, is quite interesting that in this book we find the note that it takes to 3017 until Gollum is actually captured. Interestingly, he's also in 3017 released from Mordor again and then he leaves Mordor and is captured by Aragorn in the Dead Marshes, who brings him to Thranduil in Mirkwood, where Gandalf can interrogate Gollum and piece together the missing puzzle pieces. And then later, I think in April 2018, so a year later, or around a year later, he tells a story to Frodo in um, sh The Shadow of the Past. And that is quite fascinating because from the Appendix B, if we only look at this, I would assume this Gollum being captured happened a bit earlier, like 3016, 15, I don't know. He was like a slave, treated badly, was a long time a prisoner of Sauron and was not traveling freely. But in the Unfinished Tales, we get this note. Of course, the Unfinished Tales, we it can be debated how canon this is. But at least at some point, Tolkien had the idea that Gollum was captured relatively late. If this is true or not, we actually don't know it because the unfinished tales are usually composed out of notes and uh, drafts from Tolkien that were never published and then published posthumously. So in this case, we don't know it, but we know somewhere between 3009 and 3017 he was captured and in Mordor by Sauron and then released again in 3017. And then all this starts. So from... All this from this outline, we now have an idea of when this game basically could play. Because, as mentioned um, earlier, Gollum reads the confines of Mordor 2980, so decades before that already. So it can play from this point on in the history to um, three, all the way up to 3017, 3018. That is. No, it has to play 3018 because next mention is in um, in the, uh, the 20th of June 
uh, Third Age 3018, Sauron attacks Osgiliath. About the same time, Thranduil is attacked by uh, is attacked, and Gollum escapes. So that is when Gollum actually escapes from there, and then this game might end. After this, uh, Gollum tries to find Bilbo again and re tries to reach the other side of the Misty Mountains by going through Moria. And here um, he can't go through the uh, through Durin's doors and he's trapped in Moria basically. But luckily, as we know from the Lord of the Rings, Frodo and the Fellowship go to Moria too and there from this point on Gollum follows them until we know how the Lord of the Rings um, goes. So. This is the basic outline uh, of, of the game, which, which is quite interesting. If we now look at the trailer, which I will now play here in the background, um, let's have some, 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 now that we know the law, we um, can look into what's actually going on. So of course, as I said, the game is made by Dele Games and it's kind of funny if you look at the orc standing on the bridge, you see that his right foot is not perfectly placed and hovering a bit in the air. It's a bit unfortunate, but, um, yeah, it, like like a, it should be noted that this game is not a AAA title, so don't expect like stunning state-of-the-art visuals. Dedelic Games is a small German company that usually makes point-and-click adventures, so have a bit of mercy there if some of the visuals are not top-notch. But still, I think it's a very ambitious project for a studio like this, and I hope they succeed with this. But yeah, if we look here, we see... Ah, there is a mountain with fire in the background. This must be Mount Doom. And as a result, we see this fortress-like structure there to the uh, right too. This must be Barad Dur, that would be my guess. And this is then, of course, in Mordor. We see some smith fires going on, some cranes, which are interesting details. Also, if we look at some of the um, towers and structures there, it's interesting um, to see later in another shot if this could be the same place. Then we see uh, some uh, bats. And here, uh, probably a classical mechanic, like Gollum knocks down an orc. This must be an orc. We see this in a moment. He has a weird helmet, I have to admit. Um, curious how this um, is all, and he's armored. So he's more like a soldier. And that is why I think this is in uh, Mordor and not in, for example, the Misty Mountains in Goblin Town or anything, because this all feels very organized here. And we see mines, and of course, as we read earlier, um, Sauron declares, declares himself openly and also gathers his power, which also means he he increases the amount of his armies and troops, and of course they need um, armor and weapons and so on. This has to be forged, and as a result, in the, there must be mines in Mordor, and um, this might be one of them. And Gollum sneaks around there, that's at least my opinion, and knock down this this orc and like I said this is a stealth action game so it seems like you can knock out people sneak around don't want to be detected and let's look further here we see a bit of climbing which Gollum is probably pretty good at makes totally sense and we look down this pit I assume if we look there and we have a later shot where we see um, spider webs so this area down here is the same that we just saw from above in my opinion, the spiders are in the in the mountains of Mordor. That we have a note that Shelob mated with lesser spiders there. That is where the um, spiders from the Hobbit um, in the in Mirkwood and around um, Dol Guldur are from. So this this is the origin. This could be like a mine in um, the in the mountains of Shadow. The um, uh, Efeldurf, I think, is the um, Sindari name, and. I assume this could be there, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there in this game there are also other places with spiders in them. But that would make sense that this are the Mountains of Shadow. If we now look further, he holds his hat. That we uh, I talked about that there is like an influence of of Sauron summoning creatures to uh, Mordor and um, yeah, basically bringing them there, forcing his will upon them. And this might be a struggle we could see there. We can also read on the Steam page that there is like some decision making. And depending on what your decisions you um, make, Gollum's side of Gollum increases or the uh, Smeachol or Smeagol side of Gollum increases. And that might be interesting. Maybe there are multiple endings. That would be pretty cool, in my opinion. But 
let's not get too ambitious for this game. And there's also, like I um, I think mentioned earlier, this uh, red eye sign on a wall and um, we have this typical Sauron sound. So I assume there's a bit of communication and he like maybe hearing his voice in his head that could be just a save point or like where he gets new skills or something or maybe it's just a story point, I'm not sure. But we definitely will see this struggle of, of Gollum with the will of Sauron a bit in this game. This is also, we see... Uh, Mount Doom in the background and some fortress structures here. Light is also pretty cool, in my opinion. And you see just, it's a terrible place. It's basically hell. You don't want to go there like that. Because this is fitting to um, Gollum's story. Here we see him um, climb above this rope. And here's this shot I, I mentioned. When I first saw this, on my first watching of this trailer, I thought, hmm, this could be also um, Goblin Town, the Misty Mountains, which is also a place maybe uh, Gollum sneaks around, but I assume the game will mostly focus on Mordor and maybe escaping from there. Because if we um, look closer, we see this um, at the left side, this orc at the beast, and he has yeah, grayish um, skin, so I assume it must be an orc. And he also has armor. And this looks pretty, in a weird way, organized. There are cranes, we see a bit of uh, fiery ashes sparks in the air, so there might be lava and fire going on. I feel like that's untypical for how I imagine Goblin Town. And it seems like stuff is built there. This could be like a mine, or this could even be a Barad Dur, how it's built and um, or how resources are delivered there to forge. But still quite interesting. So he sneaks there, he's not noticed, and we see those beasts and these uh, wagons and everything looks heavy and so on. Uh, pretty cool. It would be nice like exploring this place, seeing what's going on, because usually you only see this place in, in like little notes in Appendix B where you just have a date and some a little bit of text what's going on there, but you never see these places and now they are filled with a bit of life and see, okay, what logistics and uh, what is necessary to maintain so, so many orcs and armies and equip them. That's, in my opinion, already uh, kind of interesting. We have this little golem sneaking around there and seeing this terrible, terrible place and what forces this will unleash on the world. That's, in my opinion, quite an interesting um, idea. And if we move uh, further, we uh, the camera just pans up and we just see all these ladders and um, smiths there and fires, forges. And also, um, we see these two towers there, and from their structure, that's also, in my opinion, another hint that this might be Barad Dur. I get, so far, the visual style is, in my opinion, distantly close to the other um, Lord of the Rings games, like Shadow of uh, Mordor or Shadow of War, and also the films a bit. And I feel like this is fitting to, to Barad Dur, these, these two towers that you can see there. And there are also a lot of structures. Of course, if we look at, at the Hobbit films, there may, might be some similarities to the um, uh, to, to Goblin Town, but if we think of Lord of Rings and the, the pits in Isengard, this is also pretty close to this. So I just assume these are orc pits where stuff is forged and maybe this is near Barad Dur or even under this mighty fortress where orcs work tirelessly. Because... Um, as we just read in the um, Unfinished Tales, he was brought to Barad Dur and Gollum definitely was a time in Barad Dur, so it makes sense that we will see this. And Barad Dur is always a very fascinating place like this. is the chief fortress of Sauron and we know very little about it, just that it must be a terrible, ter terrifying place. However, he seems not to be captured yet, but maybe he was drawn there and um, captured in Barad-dur. That would be possible, I guess, because we don't know where he was captured by Sauron. So there is a lot of interesting detail that might this uh, game have, have an interesting answer to. It's, of course, not a canon answer, because we simply don't know out of the source material that we uh, have from Tolkien. But nonetheless, um, I would enjoy like a little game staying close to the source material and adding um, some interesting ideas and series and references to it, that would be great. I hope that is what we are getting here. And yeah, this is just pens up. You can't see the sky, that would have been um, another indicator, but um, at least I couldn't see this here in my um, footage going on in parallel while I'm talking. Not sure if, there's, if this is under the earth or just 
like like in one of these side chasms of Baradur. I'm not sure. We will see. And yeah, here at the end we also see like Daedalic Entertainment and this little ME logo, which is Middle Earth Enterprises. And this is there's a Tolkien estate, and this the Tolkien estate is basically the Tolkien family, the heirs of Tolkien, and Middle Earth Enterprises, uh, not related company, and they simply own the film rights and for Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, which Tolkien himself sold in the 60s. And also the merchandise rights. And upon those rights, they are able to make those games. There was a lawsuit going on. Won't go into this into detail. And then later, there was like um, an agreement between the Tolkien estate and Middle Earth Enterprises and so on um, that further games can be made. I'm not sure how this contract and so on. Looking in detail and if they have maybe access to some other source materials now officially or not. I'm not 100% sure on this, but we will find out when this game comes out in 2022. Looking forward to this and I really hope they don't screw up. Would be amazing having another interesting little Lord of the Rings game with where we just play this one of the most fascinating characters, not only in the Lord of the Rings, in fantasy, I think itself. Like Gollum, Gollum is such an iconic character and... This is an interesting part they selected and as we learned decades worth of blank pages are there that they can fill and tell a little story here and there and as long as they don't contradict um, what is in the books um, I don't see a problem with that and looking really forward to this. So that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video if so, maybe leave like a like or a comment and maybe subscribe. If you do so, consider pressing the annoying bell too. What is up next on my channel, you might ask. So I'm still working on the Elrond video in the background. Later this day, if this video comes out today, uh, I will stream Cyberpunk on Twitch. Maybe check this out too. I also consider streaming on YouTube. Make a little Q&A um, log, Q&A stream again on YouTube next week. I'm not sure when. Maybe Tuesday? Something like this. Maybe Wednesday evening? I'm not sure yet. You, I will let you know. Then is there anything else? Should there be like a huge news to the Amazon series or to, I don't know, another Lord of the Rings games pops up out of nowhere? I will make a small video to this too. Uh, don't worry in the same format. I hope this video is actually good. That's also a question I have. Tell me how you like this uh, free narrated format. I know sometimes I lose track without a script or my phrasing is not always on point. I, Sorry for that. I hope you still enjoyed this. Is there anything else I need to say? Yeah, I just of course have to remind people there's a podcast. Last episode had Men of the West and Lord of the Rings on it. If you haven't seen it yet, feel free to check it out. It's on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and so on. Um, links are in the description. Also, um, for Tolkien Reading Day, I made a video about the Edain, the early men, how they came from the east of Middle-earth to Beleriand, where the most parts of the Silmarillion takes place in the First Age, and yeah, especially about the house of Harles and Harles herself. And that is, in my opinion, very fascinating lore. I only f focus mainly on the um, narrative and have it has an interesting twist to it. It's my opinion. The feedback on it was really positive. Thank you for that. And if you haven't seen it, just check it out. It's a fantastic little lore video. Uh, maybe I will revisit this very complex topic in the future again and also focus a bit more on the other Edain houses. It might be a very interesting topic for future videos. So... That is all there is left to say. I would say stay safe and healthy in these difficult times. Have a fantastic week and holidays. And I see you next time. Thank you for watching again and goodbye.